I've had this pile of scrap fabrics in my stash, so I thought it would be fun to create some DIYs using some of these scraps. Hey everybody, welcome to Creative by Nature DIY and Decor. My name is Donna. For the first project, you're going to need an embroidery hoop, a scrap of fabric that's in a circle shape, or you can cut one down into a circle shape. I had this one left over from a project. You'll need a heat pad, an iron, some other pieces of scrap fabric, and I am actually going to be using some fusible webbing for this project. But if you want, you can use a sewing machine. I'm going to start off by laying out my strips of fabric. These are scraps left over from previous projects. I'm just going to lay them out into a pattern over top of the circle of fabric that I have laid out. I'm gonna cut another strand here or strip from this larger piece of scrap fabric and place that until I have a desired look that I like. I'm just gonna make sure that the hoop fits nicely on top. All right, so now I'm gonna lay out my fabrics onto my heat pad and I'm going to iron them out because they were quite wrinkled. I'll do the same for all the strips as well, as well, as that'll make it easier to lay them out and add the fusible webbing underneath. Okay, so you're still going to need your heat pad and this is the heat bond brand of fusible webbing. I'm going to lay my circle down onto my mat here and I want to cut it down to size so it matches up better to the size of the hoop that I am using. I'm just doing a rough cut and then you can trim off as needed and don't forget you got to save those extra scraps that we create for future projects. So I'm just going to make sure again that this circle fits with my hoop and just trimming a little bit more off just so I have a little bit more of an even circle. Okay, so follow the instructions on the fusible webbing that you're going to be using. This is a thin strip of fusible webbing. It's what I had on hand and it's been sitting around for a while so I thought I would use that. I'm just laying all my fabrics back down onto my circle and then I am going to just play around with the placement just a little bit, move things around as needed until I have a look that I like and to make sure that my pattern will fit within my hoop. So I'm just measuring out how much of the fusible webbing I need and cutting it down. It tears really easily as well. I'm going to lift my first strip of fabric, place the fusible webbing down and put the fabric back on top. I'm going to do that for each strip of fabric I'm just going section by section and placing the uh, desired amount of fusible webbing down and then putting the fabric back on top. Now I am just going over this with my iron. It was preheated. The thicker fabrics took a little bit longer for the fusible webbing to stick. So I did add a little bit more heat to those and now I'm just adding a little bit more fusible webbing where needed just by lifting up the fabric and again placing another piece underneath. So now I'm just going to make sure again that my hoop fits and of course adjust your hoop accordingly and then you can put it all together and <laughs> I really like how that looks. So I'm just going to make sure that I have my closure at the top just so it looks all balanced. Once you have that closure all tightened up, you can then pull the fabrics so it lays taut at the front of our hoop. Don't want anything to be bulging because it does really affect the way it looks. All right, so now I'm going to trim off all the excess using my scissors and again, save those scraps. So I wanted it to be cut off clean and flush with my hoop. So I'm using an X-Acto let knife and I'm going right along flat with the hoop and cutting off all that excess and I've got a nice clean cut. 
So I've got that all trimmed off. Now it's time to decorate. You can decorate the front any way you'd like, but again, dove into my stash of fabrics and I've got all these tiny little pieces. I also have uh, some vintage buttons and my hot glue gun and scissors. So what I'm doing here is just kind of fraying the edges and then I'm going to start to layer these pieces just kind of haphazardly in a stack. I am creating a really pretty fabric flower. I have seen several tutorials on how to do this online. I've seen lots of images on Pinterest as well as on Instagram for things like this. And I always thought that it was pretty. So I've always wanted to give it a try. So I thought today would be a great day to do that. So again, you just wanna lay or stack different assorted little scraps of fibers on top of each other. I've got lace, I've got satin, and just some cotton fabrics, and I'm going to stack them until I've got a flower look. Of course, feel free to adjust these as needed. So once you have the size that you need, you can do this in reverse. I am starting with the bottom and I'm just peeling them down and adding a little bit of hot glue in the center and then pressing them into place until I've got them all attached together. Once they're all glued together, I'm going to just place it onto my hoop to make sure I have the right size and look that I like. Just moving it around until I have the placement that I like and then I'm going to glue that into place. Next, I'm going to be adding a vintage button. I've decided to just kind of go through my buttons to see what I like best. You could add some little beads to the center that would be really pretty as well you could even do some stitching i thought that would be really fun i'm just using this button here use some hot glue and put it into place and i just think this is so so pretty it actually has a really beautiful spring look For this next project, you're going to need some straws. I had these in my kitchen, so I just grabbed those ones. You'll need, again, some fabric strips from your stash and an assortment of trims. That I've got these chunky yarns. I think they're just so fun. You can get these at thrift stores or at craft stores. Also have some trims here that I had, just a bag of some scraps, assorted beads, and then you'll also need some fabric glue. I'm also going to be using my hot glue and of course some scissors. An additional thing will be a paintbrush. I'm going to be cutting my straw down and placing it onto the paintbrush and that will allow me to have a nice little handle as we work on the straw. What you're going to want to do is take a strip of your fabric, add a little bit of hot glue to your straw and fabric not too much you don't want it to get too bulky and then you're going to wrap that straw with your fabric wrapped it around you can twist it to create some nice texture any way you want and then you can just finish it off by trimming off any excess and i'm going to be using my fabric glue to tack this down i find that the fabric glue doesn't create much bulk but of course, use any glue that you would like. I also find that the fabric glue actually holds quite quickly, which is really nice. You can see how cool that looks. So now I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to see if I want to add some other fabrics. And I decided to add this touch of, I'm not sure if this is like a lining for a dress or if it's satin but it's a really interesting fiber. So I'm just gonna fray the edge a little bit and then I'm going to, again, use my fabric glue and I'm going to tack it into place. And then I'm gonna wrap it around the fabric that we've already got in place. 
I decided to twist this again just to create some unique texture. Again, I have seen so many different tutorials on how to create these, so you can check out YouTube or Pinterest and see all the different ways you can make fabric beads. So again, I'm just using my fabric glue and I tack the end into place and you can see how easily that slips off of our straw. I'm just gonna put it right back on. Sorry, slipped off of our paintbrush. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to try doing another style here for you and uh, using the smaller straw that I had on hand. This time around, I am just going to be using this simple cotton fabric that I had. And again, you want to make sure that you add hot glue to your fabric and onto the straw. I admit sometimes I missed the straw, so I had to go back in later on and add a little bit, but you want to make sure that there's a little bit of glue on the straw, uh, otherwise the straw will slip out. So I just did a basic wrap all the way around, just created a simple cylinder around our straw with the fabric. I'm going to again tack it down with our fabric glue. Once you have your fabrics in place for your beads, I've got three selections as you can see here, we are going to start to decorate. So I am going to be using this beautiful mohair yarn that I had found at the thrift store. I have found so many cool fibers at the thrift stores, so you'll definitely want to check your locations out. So I just wrapped it around casually and adding just a dollop of my fabric glue and pressing that into place. You can add anything you'd like to these beautiful fabric beads. So for this pink one, I've decided to add this chunky yarn, but I didn't really want those bulky little bits. I just wanted the parts that in between. And again, same thing. I am just going to be using fabric glue. I decided to add this really pretty shiny trim as well. So if you ever find that any of your trims don't stick very well, of course, feel free to use your hot glue. As I discovered here, these ones were not sticking too well with the fabric glue. So I just added the tiniest little bit of hot glue and that held it into place really well. I'm just giving my fabric glue a try again, but again, it didn't hold this particular trim into place. You'll see here in a minute, it came popping off. So I ended up having to go back in and adding a dollop of hot glue on that one as well. I found that these beads were so fun and relaxing to make. I thought it would be a great project to use up those little pieces. You could do this in front of the TV, which is a really, really great thing to do. It's very relaxing. Same with those fabric flowers. You could do that as well in front of the TV. So I'm just adding a little dollop of hot glue at the end of our trim, just so it doesn't unravel. And now for this one, I am adding a scrap of some lace that I had. A project like this is great to use up all those little scraps that we like to save. So I actually have another little fun trim in my stash here in this pile. I have some trim that's already pre-beaded as well as has some sequins and I like the neutral color as well. This is great. It just makes it so easy to add a bit of sparkle and some texture. So I added a dollop of hot glue and I'm just going to wrap this strand around this beautiful bead. So for our last two fabric beads, I have decided to use some seed beads to decorate these. So I've got two different sizes of some gold ones and then I've got some clear white. 
And I'm using this tool, it is a bead tool and it's got that wax nib on the end and you can see how easy it is to pick up beads using this tool. You can pick these up at Dollar Tree, which is um, a great thing because those stores are available to all of us. I just added a dollop of hot glue onto our bead and then I picked up a bead and pressed that into the hot glue. Just wanna make sure you don't get too much glue into place, just the tiniest little bit. A precision tip glue gun would be great for this. So another way you can do it is add some hot glue directly onto our glass beads and then press those onto our fabric bead. Either way works. It depends on um, what works best for you. So I'm just gonna continue to fill these with some beads. These clear ones look like little dew drops of water on this beautiful green bead. All right, so again, you can decorate these any way you'd like. I think these all turned out beautifully and they are slipping off of our paintbrushes so nicely. You can use these for all kinds of different projects or you can even set them aside and put them on display as is. So I thought I would show you how to use one of these beads. So I again went into my stash and I've got some trims and some fabric, some wood beads and some embroidery floss. I'm just going to tear down my strips of fabric into some thinner strips and I'm just going to remove any of those excess threads. Also want to just mention that I didn't bother measuring out the length that I needed of the strips. I just kind of went with what I had here. So when, if you have a long strand, you can just cut that in half so that they're a little bit more equal. And here I have them all cut down to length. And now I'm just going to cut a long strand of the embroidery floss. And I went with an embroidery floss that I thought kind of matched the bead a bit. Next, you're going to want to take your strips of fabric and your uh, lengths of trim and just pile them up in your hand and you just want to mix them up and I'm just making sure that I have the green kind of spread throughout my gather here. Next, I'm just going to fold that in half and then if there's any pieces that are kind of a funny length, I'll just pull those down grabbed my embroidery floss and I'm going to tie it off in the center of our gather where we had it folded and I'm just going to tie a simple knot. So I did go ahead and trim off any little bits that I thought were too long. Again, you can save those little bits of pieces if you want. I'm going to tie a knot in the end of some of these strands as well. So now that you've got your fibers all in a nice beautiful tassel, I'm going to just get another strand of embroidery floss and you want to wrap it around the top and that will complete the look of our tassel. So again, I'm just going to tie that off in a simple knot after I wrapped it around a few times. You want to make sure it's tight as well. Really liking how that looks. I think it's just so pretty. Okay, so now I want to string our beads on. I found these pretty little green beads and these natural beads. I actually don't know the sizes of those, unfortunately. They came from some old pieces of kids' jewelry. So now I'm just going to take some tape and I'm going to put it on the ends of the embroidery floss just to create um, a nice sturdy end so I can string these beads on. Started with the little green one and then the natural. Now I'm adding my fiber bead and I'm using a bamboo skewer just to help poke it through because it got caught up on some of the fibers. Worked just fine. And then I'm going to again add my natural bead and the green bead and then I'm going to tie it off with a knot at the top. Mm -hmm. 
So you can leave this string as long as you need. I actually kind of wish I did leave it a little bit longer and you'll see here in a minute. I think it turned out so pretty. I think it would just make a beautiful gift topper or you can make some larger ones to use as curtain ties. Here I've added it to the edge of a altered book that I had made a few years ago. I just think it is a, such a pretty little touch to this book. So I thought that looked so pretty. I decided to add another little accessory or make another little accessory for the book. I've got my scraps of fabric and trim, my heat bond, scissors, heat mat, iron, and of course my scraps of fabric. I'm going to cut down my card stock. It's a sturdy card stock and I'm cutting it down to two and a quarter inch wide. And then I'm cutting it to about seven and a quarter inch long, but of course, feel free to do it any size you want. I have this nice long strip of fabric. Um, it was a nice, beautiful scrap fabric. I love the color. And then I've got all these other little strips again. I'm going to lay them out onto the cardstock in a pattern that I like and using the assortment of fabrics that I like. Of course, feel free to do different shapes. I am just gonna go with the strips. So now I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to just kind of trim off a bit of the excess. Now you can see there, I had a little piece of blue lace. I decided not to use it because I wasn't sure if it would melt uh, when I applied my iron to it. So I end up replacing that and you'll see here in a bit what I decided to go with. So I just trim again my strips of fabric down to um, a more manageable size and I'll put those back into place. So you can see here I went with uh, some tree patterned fabric instead of that lace. I think it is a much, much better choice. And as you can see, I also got my heat mat out. So I'm going to, again, just iron out my strips. It just makes it easier to lay them out and work with the heat bond. I'll also iron out this larger strip as well. This is actually gonna be the backing for our uh, strip of paper here, or our cardstock. I'm just gonna trim that down to size, and then I'm going to remove any of the excess little fibers and if you need to trim your piece down, go ahead and do so. I just made sure that I had just a little bit of a hem all the way around. So before I do any of that though, I'm going to put my heat bond onto the card stock and then I'm going to apply the backing onto there. And then I'm going to use the iron to put it into place. So you can see how there was a little bit all the way around the edge. I actually wanted that. And then um, if you don't, of course, just trim it off. Um, I did go in and I just kind of evened it out a little bit with my scissors. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add some strips of the heat bond onto the front side of our cardstock. I'm just making sure that it's overlapping between the cardstock as well as the fabric. And I do that all the way around the edge. Of course, I go ahead and fill on the fill in the inside as well. Once you have that in place, you can then put your strips of fabric on the top in the pattern that you like. And then you can go ahead and use your iron to press it all into place. So our bookmark has cooled down and now I am going to go ahead and use my scissors and just trim off any of the excess around the edge. I did go ahead and fray the edges as well because I don't know, I really like that look. So I did that for each side and then 
you can either leave it as is or you can decorate it. So I decided I wanted to add some stitching. So I'm going to thread a needle with some white embroidery floss and I'm poking the needle through <laughs> the fabric and the heat bond and <laughs> the cardstock. I have to say I should have pre-punched my holes, uh, but I didn't and it did make it a lot more difficult. So it did take me a while to do this, but I have to say I am really happy with the look. So I'm glad I did it, but I think next time if I do this, I would definitely pre poke the holes using maybe an awl that would probably work really well, but you can see how pretty that stitching looks. So I just continued to add the stitching all the way around the edge. So I did make sure that I ended at the back side. So then both my strands are there. That way here I can tie off with a simple knot. So again, you could just leave it as is, but I wanted to add just a little bit more. So. Again, I'm grabbing my little strips of fabric from my stash. I'm going to cut this pretty pattern. It's at the bottom of my bookmark and I wanted to carry that color all the way to the top. So I just cut a little strip and I'm going to create a little tab at the top. I'm also going to add this pretty little bit of lace and I'm just folding that over and I'm going to just trim it off here. And I'm going to attach it using just a tiny little bit of hot glue. And I'm going to just press that into place. I'll do the same for the back side. And the nice thing about using the hot glue is that it will help to hold that little knot into place as well. So I also decided that I wanted to add just a little tiny staple. I thought it would help to hold all those fibers into place, especially since this is going to get used a lot. So I added one to the back and the front. And then for another little added touch, I decided to go ahead and add a little vintage button. This is optional. You could add a little bow to the top or a little flower. Um, or even some beads would be a really nice touch as well, but I like the look of a button So I'm just going through and just deciding on which one I would like to use Again, I went with a bigger one and I'm adding it with some hot glue and then putting it into place I think it just turned out so pretty love it and I think it looks great with my altered book Okay, so this next project is fun but messy. I had a lot of fun doing this one. You'll need a bowl, scraps of fabric, scissors, saran wrap, some decoupage glue, a mixing container, and some water. You'll also need a paintbrush, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm just going through my fabrics and trying to decide on the color combination and pattern combination I want to go with. I really like this minty green and these neutral colors as well as those that birch bark fabric, I have to say it's my favorite one right now. I don't have very much of it, so I'm glad I had enough for this project because it ended up turning out really, really cute. So I'm just going to cut my strips of fabric down to size. I'm actually giving them a little cut and then tearing them. I again want that frayed edge. 
I do try to remove some of the loose fibers, but I do want to keep some, uh, but that's just by choice. I just like that kind of a rustic casual look. Now some of this fabric is kind of stiff, such as this one here. So I'm just going to crinkle it up a bit. That just helps to loosen the fibers a bit and that will help the glue to soak into it a lot better. So I'm just going to continue to cut my stri strips of fabric down to size and you can see how I've got them all piled up according to pattern and color. Next I have my bowl and I'm going to cover it with the plastic wrap. Um, as you can see it is on the exterior. I am going to use two pieces but first I need to just put the one on and I'm going to wrap it over the edge and I felt it wasn't enough so I went ahead and uh, used another piece. So once your bowl is all covered, you've got your paintbrush as well as a protective surface. I've got a craft mat that I'm using. I am going to now mix two parts glue to one part water. I'm going to mix that up and you can see the consistency it has. I wanted it to be a bit more runny, but not, not too runny because I do want this glue to adhere all my fabrics together. So once you've got a good amount of your glue mixture ready, you can then place a piece of fabric onto the bowl. And then I like to use a paintbrush. I find that I have better control of the glue, but some people will actually take their fabric piece and soak the fabric into the solution and then squeeze it out. I have find that that is really messy. I've tried it and I didn't really like the way that worked. I prefer the paintbrush, but of course that is optional. So when you place another piece of fabric down, you wanna make sure that it overlaps onto the fabrics that are already there. Keep in mind, this is going to soak up quite a bit of the glue, and you will also end up creating a bit of a puddle as you work along on your protected surface. When you get to the top, you want to just add some glue and then press the edge of the fabric over the rim of your bowl and just press that down into place. So I'm just going to continue to work on my first layer. And as you can see, I am going with the neutral colors first, and then I will be going back in and applying the other ones. So I am almost done here and I found that the fibers did or the fabrics did move around a bit. So while they're still wet, you can pull them and put them back into place and then apply more glue as needed. I'm going to set this aside to dry. I have it upside down on my Mod Podge on the craft mat. And as you can see, I also have a vent above allowing it to dry faster. It's partially dry now ready for the next layer. I wanted to partially dry it first. That way here, I would prevent my, fa my fabrics from moving around like they were. So I'm just gonna try and figure out a little bit of a pattern. I decided to go ahead and add this green one and I started to apply my glue. And as I was working, I discovered that it was absorbing a lot more of my glue solution. And that of course is because the underside is now dry and that is gonna be soaking up glue as well. So just keep that in mind. So I'm just going to continue to add my fabrics. And again, you wanna make sure that you overlap your fabrics as you go along. So I'm just going in and adding a few more pieces over top and then once you have your bowl all covered the way you like you can then again set it aside and I allow this to dry overnight so it's the next morning and it dried really well and I think it looks so cool and it feels very very sturdy so I'm just going to lift up the rim just to loosen it a little bit 
And now I'm going in with my scissors and I'm going to trim off the excess. Now, I wanted to do it like this because I wanted my rim to be nice and sturdy. So that's why I chose to do it this way, but you could do it where you don't have it curled over the edge if you want a really rustic and rugged edge. So you can see I'm just cutting along the edge and made it nice and flush and you can see how well that slipped off. I'm removing the plastic and you've got a beautiful little bowl. You can see that the inside is quite shiny and the outside is nice and matte. And you can see how it took on the shape of our bowl. I can't wait to make more of these. Okay, I wanted to add just a touch of decorative trim. So I have this braided jute twine in my stash of trims. So I'm going to apply that using some hot glue. I'm just trimming off the end just to give it a nice clean edge. I'm gonna start off with a dollop of hot glue push that into place and I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of hot glue to the end there and that will help to prevent my trim from fraying. So now I'm going to just continue to just work in sections just a little bit at a time, add a little bit of hot glue and then press the twine into place at the rim's edge. Of course, this is optional. You could just leave your bowl as is, but I don't know. I just thought that this was a really nice added touch. So I'm at the end and I just again trim that off, adding a little bit of hot glue and enough so that the end of my trim doesn't fray as well. Again, I just really, really enjoyed making this and I am lo looking forward to making some more. I think it looks so pretty having some strips of fabric scraps that I had. I think it just, it's just gorgeous. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Here's some more fabric scrap inspiration from Christmas time. It'll help to use up all those scraps that we have. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.